Hi there, welcome to this Tech Pathways London interview. My name's Caitlin McMillan, I'm the project manager at Tech Pathways London and I'm here with Jack Blackburn. Hi Jack. Hi Caitlin, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. A little bit warm, it's quite warm today. Very good. Uh, soldier on. Uh, so Jack, could you introduce yourself uh, and describe your job? Uh, so I'm Jack Blackburn, I am the diary and news reporter for The Times. Uh, so my basic job is to try and find a number of short, funny stories every day and put that into a nice little column to try and brighten the reader's morning. Excellent. And uh, you're very good at it, if I do say so myself. I very much enjoy reading your writing. Okay. Uh, so it may seem strange that we have got someone who works for a newspaper to talk about digital today, uh, but your journey to where you are has involved quite a lot of digital technology. Uh, so would you be able to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, so I, I didn't start off in journalism. I left university and uh, tried to become an actor. Uh, As all the best people did, Jack. <laughs> and, and in fact, I did become an actor. It was, I was successful at, it, at least becoming one. Um, but um, as, as you may have it does involve uh, a lot of jobs in between jobs, uh, some of which, uh, not all, are, but some of which are very, very boring. And I was um, sat in an office one day waiting um, to be called into this room to, to uh, record a hearing. And um, it was the first day of the 2015 general election. Um, and I'm sort of very interested in politics. And I, I wanted to write something taking the piss out of it. And um, I just had hours to spare. So I started blogging. And I wrote a blog on that day, and then the, then the next day I did it, and then the day after that. And then I just thought, well, I'm going to keep on doing this because it's also quite good for discipline. It gives you something to get up in the morning and do when things are a bit slow. And fortunately for me, um, one friend of mine who was sort of in the, had a, a foot in the journalistic industry um, forwarded on to my now boss, um, who liked what I was doing, gave me advice and encouraged me, and then... Um, years later um that flourished into a job but the that project started off as a blog but then expanded into uh podcasts and youtube so and every bit of it was very valuable in um sort of building up a profile and and also sort of self-education um that i learned a lot from my craft of, of just sitting down and writing and doing things and writing for different mediums um, and exploring and and failing and succeeding at different points um, so it was it was a very valuable um, thing to do let's hone in on the podcasting element of that for a second um, had you ever podcasted before how did you go about getting started with doing that uh, I had not podcasted at all um, God, how did I go about starting it and um, there were it sort of actually came through friends. They, they were very keen on it um, as an idea. Um, and so you, the first thing you do is start thinking about, um, you know, what that might be, but then you've also got to take the technical requirements in. And essentially it's pretty easy. Um, it requires quite a considerable outlay in terms of getting a decent microphone, but frankly, you know, the phone, your phone's getting better all the time. So if, you, if, you, if you're not that worried about quality, you can use that or there are other options. And you need a piece of editing software like GarageBand or something. Um, I used one which I um, downloaded for um, a work job. So I already had that. So there's quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of opportunities to, to sort of use um, tech that you can keep the cost down mm -hmm. and basically we just went we sort of went at it I, I listened back to the very first one we ever did it came up on shuffle a little while ago and it was a little bit harrowing um, <laughs> so, um it, it again it was part of the learning experience but it um it, so long as you sort of are willing to take the plunge there are loads of um, things on blogs and Google searches, which can give you sort of quite easy advice. And learning to use editing software might sound very intimidating, but actually it's quite, it's relatively straightforward. Um, and the first edit took um, basically a day 
to produce a half hour podcast and then by the end of it it got a lot more tight and we I knew how to make sure I wasn't spending umpteen hours on something so yeah you, you develop as you as you experiment fab and in your job now what digital skills do you use um so the they're not it's relatively straightforward it's work, work processing obviously um and the ability to engage with the software we use to to make the um the newspaper um that just requires a little bit of um, direction but you need to have the basic skills however um there particularly uh, post lockdown there's there's a big emphasis on digital subscriptions we lost a lot of um circulate all papers lost a lot of circulation through things like not being able to have people pick it up at the airport and things like that um and a lot of our um subscribers moved to digital because they didn't want to to go to the shops um and understanding what how digital works is very important um and that is not just in terms of um, understanding how we try to promote an article or what might um, get it further up Google or not, which is, that's all, it's always a little bit of a, a educated guessing game and, mm. and there's no way of knowing, but you also have to understand about um, Twitter and uh, other social media that um, can really help drive uh, people to your work and you know build your profile as well it's a it's an individual and a team game in a way and you need to um you need to be able to use those tools so one final question if someone if a young person came to you asking for your advice on on how to get where you are what would you advise them um Firstly, write. So blogging remains a really useful tool and, and do proper blogging, um, not just going on Twitter. And you know, Twitter is very good for training you how to be um, pithy and funny, but it's also um, very demoralizing and, um, and not necessarily the best place to spend your day. Um, so find something that you want to write about. Um, read widely about it and blog. A blog should be no longer than 800 words, preferably nearer to 500, and just keep on writing and sharing it. Um, and uh, when you do get the opportunity to ask a professional for advice, you've then got a bank of work for them to look at. Um, and you can show them that and they can give you um, tips. But yeah, use, use those tools that have been around for quite a while now um, that will allow you to, um, to flourish and, and have patience. It, you know, it doesn't, for some people launching into sort of the digital space, it does happen very quickly. And those are the ones you hear about. Um, but for the vast majority of people, it is something which grows very steadily. Um, and you've got to, think about what you're going to get out of that. And I think the biggest thing you will get out of it is learning. Um, and if you keep on plugging away, you may be lucky enough to, to get a job out of it. Excellent. I think that's a brilliant note to finish on. Thank you so much for your time, Jack.